Francis here from EMTB Review and I have a good one for you guys today because I'm going to give you some deep insight into the differences between a hub motor that you see on this e-bike and a mid-drive motor that you see here on a similar e-bike. I'm going to discuss 10 key attributes like range, power, maintenance, cost, and tell you which one is better in each of these characteristics. And in the end, I'm going to give you a verdict on which one is better for you and for which applications. Okay, good one for you today because in my testing of a bunch of e-bikes, commuters, and mountain bikes, I've come across some really good discoveries about the difference between hub motors and mid-drive motors. And first I'm going to discuss two massive things that you should know about these things. And then I'm going to go through the attributes like cost, weight, and whatnot. So the first thing you need to know about it is there's a, the, the biggest difference between these two is in a hub motor, the motor does not go through the drivetrain, meaning the motor is directly attached to the ground tire motor tire ground meaning whatever gear you're in it doesn't really matter to the motor because the motor bypasses the whole drivetrain on a mid-drive motor the motor goes through the drivetrain so it goes through the crank the, pe the pedals the chain and all the gears that you're in so a mid-drive motor has the advantage of gearing and it also puts a lot of stress on the gearing so that is a huge difference between the two. My second mind-blowing discovery is I always thought hub drive motors are for cheap bikes, you know, ignore them. I'm, I'm a mountain biker at heart uh, because they're unnatural feeling and whatnot. But it turns out it's because most hub motor bikes don't have a torque sensor. So, but in, in recent bikes that I received, the hub motor bikes have a torque sensor and now I get that natural feeling. So a torque sensor senses how much power you put in with your legs on, on the pedals and the bottom bracket. You're usually a bottom bracket torque sensor. And with that information, it's able to know when to start the motor, how strong to start the motor, you know, how much to give you. So then you get that natural feeling. Without a torque sensor, they rely on a cadence sensor, the spinning of the wheel. So it doesn't really know how to, when to start or, or how much to give the driver, how much help he needs. But with a torque sensor, they are both almost on equal ground on what information they know about the cyclist so they can give uh, assistance as it's needed. So now I'm going to discuss 10 key attributes or key considerations about these motors, how they're different from each other, and I'm actually going to add, declare a winner in each category, all right? So I'm going to have a table of contents so you can skip to the area that you're interested in. The first attribute is cost. Which one is more expensive, you know, given this kind of the same quality and attributes and the advantage goes to the hub motor right here you know for a similar manufacturer like Bafang uh, similar power and quality their hub motor costs about $400 and their mid-drive motor costs about $800 and that is typical of what you see across manufacturers mid-drive motors are more expensive than e equally powerful hub motors so advantage hub motor the second attribute I have for you is weight. Weight, which one is lighter, which one's heavier? Obviously you want lighter and the advantage goes to the mid-drive motor. So the typical mid-drive motor weighs about four to six, maybe seven pounds. And the typical hub motor weighs about eight to 10 pounds. So, you know, a couple pound difference between the two given similar power levels. So when weight is a key consideration for you guys, then mid-drive motor has the advantage here. Okay, the next key consideration, number three, is smoothness and ride quality. 
and right here I'm going to put a caveat both of them need a torque sensor if your most mid-drive motors they have a torque sensor and a lot of hub motors especially in the past don't have a torque sensor so in this kind of uh, shootout you know the the hub motor has no chance you know it's just very unnatural feeling it's best used as a moped or, or a throttle bike uh, so both of them need a torque sensor so they have an equal chance of having that natural feel so in this kind of competition the advantage goes to the mid-drive motor so the mid-drive motor always proves to be smoother you know and a little more natural feeling and the reason is this basically the mid-drive motor assists your legs it works with your pedal it works from the crank while you work on the pedal so you work in conjunction with each other so you both of you tension that chain that cassette that ratchet and then into the wheel so it, it delivers quite a natural feeling next attribute number four that I'd like to discuss is one of noise so in all my testing the mid-drive motor is more quiet so the, we have some very expensive mid-drive motors the levos the new trek tq uh, even this van powers you know the mid-drive always proves to be a little more more quiet especially at high levels of output a lot of hub motors you know so, some of them are quiet at low levels but at high high levels of output they make they make this roar this little whine or roar and uh, I'll, I'll try to demonstrate to you uh, in the videos what kind of noise it makes you know in high powers I think it just doesn't have as much sound insulation uh, as this sophisticated mid-drive motors the fifth attribute I'd like to discuss with you guys is power which one's got more horsepower and this is one of the things why I wanted to make this video this because researching this blew me away you know I thought for sure mid-drive uh, was going to be better you know it can get you up a hill you know it uh, you know it's got all that torque and whatnot but it turns out you heard it here first hub motors are more powerful hub motors are more powerful so basically most of these hub motors these mid-drive motors are 250 watts they peak out at about 500 watts and these hub motors are at 750 watts and they peak out at 11 1200 watts and I'm all like whoa is that is that true and I researched it and it is true the hub motor just has more space more magnets equals more power and that's why it can deliver all this top speed all this gusto uh, so if you want to go you know class class 3 bike you know you got a heavy load you want to go 30 miles an hour 28 miles an hour it's hub motor for you so it they that they can the shocking thing to me is an engineer at in Taiwan uh, specialized told me their hub motor has more power than the mid their than their Levo and I said no way but it is true so the caveat is in your mid-drive motor it has the advantage of gear reduction meaning you know imagine if your Levo uh, doesn't have any gears it's a single speed that's that's the true power of your mid-drive motor you know the hub motor will propel you the mid-drive motor you can go through gears you know it's like your car you know on first gear you could you could uh, like an 18 wheeler it can haul you know so so, so much load you know and then for speed you know you go through gears so mid-drive motors have that advantage uh, and it this it deceives you into thinking they have more torque more power but really it's the hub drive motors that have more horsepower all right number six attribute is durability and maintenance and if we're just talking about the motor itself the winner is the hub motor the mo hub motor is simpler than the than the mid-drive motor mid-drive motor has a lot of gear reduction in there it's got a tiny little motor and so many gears and parts that it it can break it it will break and it's it's uh, really so close to your pedals uh, that take a lot of hits you know you do a lot of pedal strikes uh, and and whatnot so in terms of durability of the unit cell it's the hub drive motor because it's it's simpler uh, and it's more sealed uh, it doesn't have this bottom bracket going through it and whatnot but a couple caveats is if you are talking about changing your tire changing your sprocket uh, your chain or your wheel hub motors have that difficulty uh, because there's a wire connected to your uh, your your rear wheel and it's difficult to manage and then the other caveat that kind of balances this out is hub motor bikes they don't go through the drivetrain uh, drivetrains are the weak link of e-bikes right now because the chain is old school is it, it, it's for human power the, the cassette the derailleur everything's for human power 
and when you go you know multiply that by three or four you know with uh, with assisted power they just they you just snap your chain a mid-drive motorbike as well as it rides is very hard on the drivetrain and you wear out parts very quickly on it number seven is throttle compatibility if throttle is important to you and in some cases it is you have a cargo bike and it's hard, you want to get started easily on a stoplight or you live on a hill you know and uh, you know you're trying to get started on a hill a throttle really helps out you know to get you going hub drive motors are very good at this you know it's it's what they're made for uh, you can throttle you don't even need a chain you can throttle that thing uh, mid drive motors most of them don't have a throttle when you have a throttle it's okay but it's not ideal you could uh, basically you have to you have to still pedal <laughs> because it, the, the mid-drive motor still has to go through the chain. So you're throttling, but you, you have to spin the pedal. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a strange, happy medium uh, on a mid-drive motor with throttle. So throttle compatibility, advantage, hub motor. All right, number eight, we're getting down to the stretch. I hope I've kept you guys engaged so far. So number eight is bike compatibility. Bike compatibility means what, how many motors, how many bikes uh, does, does this motor fit? And the advantage here is with hub motors. Hub motors, all you need is the compatible hub size, the width, and you're good to go. Uh, and the wheel size and whatnot, you're good to go. Mid-drive motors, unfortunately, the nature of the beast is that every mid-drive motor has its own bolt mounting pattern, and no two manufacturers have the same bolt mounting pattern. So a bike has to be built around a specific mid-drive motor. All right, getting down to the wire. Number nine is regenerative braking compatibility with regenerative braking. Regenerative braking is, is like your, your Toyota Prius. You know, when you're going downhill, can you turn that energy, that, that can, uh, potential energy, into uh, battery energy, convert it again? And this one is only possible with the hub motor. Uh, and the reason is it, it's just physics. You know, to turn that, that physical energy into electrical, you have to spin the motor uh, and use the motor as a brake. So usually you, you put that in tandem with the braking system. It's kind of complicated uh, when done well, uh, but you know, the hub motor is already spinning. As opposed to the mid-drive motor, it's not spinning, huh? right? It's just like this, because only the wheel spinning. To spin the motor, you would have to spin the chain or you would need an elaborate system of chains. And trust me, my friends have tried. I have some engineering friends, engineer friends who've tried this thing. It looks very complicated. It's, you just get a lot of power loss uh, when you try to do regenerative braking on a mid-drive. So advantage, hub motor. And finally, the last attribute I'd like, I'll talk to you about is range and efficiency. Which one is more efficient uh, with the same size battery climbing a hill or, or getting a lot of miles? The winner here is the mid-drive motor. Uh, and the reason is it has the advantage of gearing. Gearing is cool because you're able to, you know, either get a lot of torque or a lot of speed, you know, while the motor is operating at its most efficient range. You know, the hub motor just has to spin uh, wildly. And if you're climbing a big hill, the system has to put so much power onto that hub motor just to climb that hill. And most of it is, is generated as heat and wasteful energy, okay? So there you go. Those are the 10 attributes. What is the right motor for you? I would say this is pretty easy. If you are a mountain biker, if you want a mountain bike, like real mountain biking, uh, for all the disadvantages I said, it has to be mid-drive motor. Mid-drive motor for sure, because handling is key. Hand, you know, handling is so important in a mountain bike, and the location of the mid-drive motor is right centrally located, and you know, it, it, it makes it ideal. It's still heavy, but it makes it ideal, a very neutrally balanced bike. On a hub motor, you have 10 pounds on the rear, and it, it's a non-starter, basically, if you wanna jump or, or do some real uh, good, good uh, bike handling, so. Now, the other side of the coin is if you're a commuter, if you are, you know, if you, you want a cargo bike, you want two kids back there, uh, you just wanna commute, uh, you don't want to spend 10 grand, you want to spend 2,000. It has to be hub motor. Uh, hub motor, and let me give you that caveat, which is look for that torque sensor. Get that torque sensor, and now you have kind of the best of both worlds. Torque sensor is about a $100 item. 
uh, adds up about 100 bucks to the, the price of the bike. So it's still, it's still in the two, $3,000 range. But if you're a commuter, hub motor uh, with a torque sensor is very good. In fact, I just got that, like I said, a specialized globe haul. Uh, it can carry 400 pounds of payload, rider and, and cargo, and it has a hub motor. Uh, and it's got pretty darn good range and power <laughs> and, and get up and go and natural feeling. So there you go. I hope you learned something today. I certainly did because I was like mid-drive motor or nothing. But you know these new generations of, of hub motors have really opened my eyes. Uh, and then seeing it at a different light uh, really tells me that, yeah, mid-drive is not for everyone, you know, not for all budgets and not for all applications. So it's great we have uh, good options on both sides of the coin. Thank you very much.